This happened a few weeks ago. It was Thursday morning, and I was up, trying to get our two kids ready for school, when the phone rang. Since it was only 7.30, I wondered who could be calling. Caller ID showed that the number was out of range, which made me think even more. Hello? I said into the phone. John, it's me. It was Claire, my wife. I wonder what she wants, I thought, since we had talked the night before. My wife works as a representative for a small marketing and printing firm in our mid-sized city and travels a lot. I more or less take care of our children as I work from home, only occasionally going to our office in the city. In any case, it suits us, and the two of us earn good money. We have a nice four-bedroom house in the suburbs with a pool and a good group of friends. What happened, Claire? I have a problem, honey. Yesterday in the evening, my wallet was stolen when I went down to the hotel lobby to get a newspaper. You need to cancel our credit cards and get them to issue new ones, ASAP. I spoke to Joy, my boss, and she will arrange for a new American Express card to be sent to me this evening so I can get it before I leave tomorrow. She'll also wire me some cash to help me get by. You are usually very careful with your purse. What's happened? I was a little careless and put it on the checkout counter while I went to get other reading materials, and when I came back, it was gone. The cashier said she was distracted by another customer and didn't notice anything. My driver's license is also missing, but the hotel is sending someone to check the dumpsters in the area, and I hope they find it. Otherwise, I'll have to take a taxi to a meeting today. Okay, I'll take care of the credit cards as quickly as I can. Forgive me for being so careless, honey. Hopefully it won't cost us more than the $200 or so that I had in my wallet. The rest of the cards I had could be replaced over time. Most of my makeup was in the room, so I'll be ready for the presentation this morning. As children, I miss you guys. That's exactly what happened about six weeks ago. I managed to cancel the credit cards before any charges came up, and they found her wallet with her driver's license and other non-credit cards, so I just forgot about it. Our life went on. Today I'm looking at my wife's Fidelity account statement. She keeps a separate investment account because that's where she put her inheritance after her parents died in a car accident several years ago. I try to respect her privacy regarding this account, but I was looking for our home insurance policy and came across a folder with monthly statements for her account. I knew that after her parents died, the inheritance was about $350,000 and I was wondering what the bill was now. I was glad that it was now over $400,000. While looking at her statement, I noticed that about six weeks ago, $3,000 was withdrawn from her account, and I wondered what she spent the money on. My curiosity piqued, I dug into the details of her bank account and discovered that she had written a check for that amount to a jewelry store in the town where she had lost her purse a couple of days after she had been there. What did she buy at the jewelry store? I wondered. She didn't buy anything for herself, and I didn't hear her mention buying jewelry for anyone else. She has a brother, but I didn't think he deserved a $3,000 gift. After a few minutes of thought, I went to the computer, found the website of the jewelry store, and wrote down the phone number. I picked up the phone and dialed the store number. A woman answered the phone, named the store and then asked how she could help me. I identified myself and the deal I was interested in, then explained that we were having problems with the purchase and wanted to know if it had a store warranty. She spent a minute searching on her computer and asked me, Apparently you have a problem with the rings. Rings? I asked myself. What rings did she buy? I was happy when the girl on the phone suddenly spoke again. Oh, I remember this purchase. The lady was very upset when she came and told us that her wedding and engagement rings had been stolen and she wanted to replace them. It took us a long time to find two rings that would suit her. She used the company credit card as collateral and, a few days later, sent us a check. Are you saying there are problems with them? We provide a 90-day guarantee on them. Is the diamond in its setting loose? Did she replace the engagement and wedding rings? I was puzzled. She never talked about losing them only that her purse was stolen. I should have thought about this more. Listen, I told the girl. I need to talk to my wife about this and call you back. 
I'll call you back later. Okay, goodbye. She looked puzzled, but not as puzzled as I was. Obviously, the rings must have been in her purse when it was stolen. Why would they be in her purse, unless she didn't want others to know she was married? There were no restrictions on marriage at her job, as far as I know. However, if she wanted to appear single in a social situation, I reasoned, it might mean she wanted to be a player when she was away from home. This thought immediately made my stomach ache. We were married for eleven years. We had two children, Jeremy, seven, and Melissa, six, and I thought we had the perfect marriage and family. Our love life was fine, or so I thought. Why would she seek sex outside of our marriage? She usually traveled once a month and stayed two or three nights in some distant city, so if she wanted to play, she would feel safe doing so then. The loss of the rings must have frightened her greatly, and she decided to replace them with some that were as close to the originals as possible. I bought them when I didn't make much money and they weren't fashionable, so getting a good likeness wouldn't be very expensive. She could have filed a claim with our insurance company, but I would likely have found out about it. If her purse was indeed stolen at the hotel, she should have reported it. I was interested in what she told them about the disappearance. I found the hotel number and called them. I asked if they had a record of my wife's purse being stolen. When they responded that they had a written report of the incident, I asked if they could fax me a copy. A few minutes later, I had a copy. The statement was drawn up and signed by Claire. In it, she described how her purse was stolen while she was dancing in the hall. She left her purse in the booth where she was sitting, and when she returned to her seat, it was gone. The hotel noted that Claire did not want to involve the police. My mind was racing with the implications of what I had discovered. She lied to me about the rings being stolen, and she lied to me about them being stolen from a gift shop. Perhaps there was some other explanation for this, but I could not imagine any other scenario other than the disgusting thoughts that were running through my head. I knew I had to figure out what losing those rings meant, or it would drive me crazy. But it was becoming obvious that the rings were in her purse when she was dancing with some unknown man. After that, she left on a trip a couple of weeks ago and was due to go on another trip in a couple of days and I needed to get a little more information about the itinerary for her next trip. I wanted to find out what she did in the evenings when she was away from home. If she had intimate relationships with other men, then perhaps the loss of the rings was enough to scare her. I knew that if I found out that she had been unfaithful to me, it would probably be the end of our marriage, although I didn't want to think about the impact on the children. She was a great mother, but I couldn't let her have custody if we separated, and she started traveling and having sex. My mind was racing, trying to figure out how to find other clues about her fidelity. What else can tell me what she did during her travels? Have you used he uses condoms having sex? I would bet that she used condoms since she probably didn't want to bring anything home or get pregnant. I had a vasectomy after the birth of our second child, and pregnancy would have been an absolute no-no. She couldn't trust a man to bring condoms, so she had to have her own supply. Where would she keep them? She couldn't keep them at home or in her car, so she would have to keep them in her office at work. Most likely they would have been with her when she left on a business trip. She always carried her business papers, laptop, and presentation materials in a large briefcase that she kept in her office. However, if she was on an early morning flight, she would bring her briefcase home the night before and then take it and her suitcase to the airport. This was the clue. I had to find an opportunity to search the briefcase before she left. I was hoping her next trip would involve an early morning flight. I decided that I had to act calm so as not to alert her that something was wrong. I shouldn't have worried, because when the kids got home from school I was too busy to worry. But the possibility of her cheating on me remained in the back of my mind. When Claire returned from work, I had a minor accident while preparing dinner. A dish of beans slipped out of my hands and fell onto the floor. I set about cleaning with my usual calmness. And with children running around, I seemed a little agitated, so I don't think she noticed anything strange in my behavior. When everything had calmed down and the mess had been cleaned up, I greeted her with a kiss on the cheek, as I usually did, and we sat down to eat. 
While we ate, we usually chatted about our day, so I didn't think it was unusual to ask about her upcoming trip. Are you leaving again in a couple of days? Oh yeah, almost the same thing again. I'm not looking forward to it. If you don't like it, why don't you apply for another position? You've been working in the company long enough and know enough about it. You can fit in almost anywhere. I've already thought about it, but I want to work a little more before I sit down at the table. I decided to prick her conscience a little. The children and I really miss you when you're gone. I know and I regret it. I miss you too. So where are you going this time? And are you leaving in the morning so we can meet before you leave? I looked at her, remembering that the children were listening. I felt like I was making a good game by pretending everything was normal, even though I was having a hard time eating because my stomach was in turmoil. She obviously thought everything was fine because she responded in kind to me. I wondered if her stomach was giving her problems, but she seemed to be eating without any problems. Maybe I was wrong about her, but if I could check her portfolio, I would have a more accurate opinion of her fidelity. I'm only going to Denton, so I have a 7.30 flight in the morning, and I need something to tide me over until I get back on Friday. She winked back at me. This is good. I winked back, trying to act normal, and she blushed. This meant that she would bring the briefcase home the evening before departure and would not go to work until she left for the airport. Her carefree attitude about her trip in front of our kids and me seemed to indicate that she doesn't play when she's away or she's used to being lied to. I hoped the briefcase would tell the whole story. The evening before leaving, Claire returned home in a good mood and, as usual, parked her car next to mine in the garage. She seemed excited about something, and I wondered if she was looking forward to sex with me or someone else. She didn't take her briefcase with her, so I assumed it was in her car. I was working on getting dinner ready, and when we sat down to eat, she asked me if I would pick up her bag from the garage when we finished eating. Of course, do you have everything you need? Oh, yes. It's a normal trip. I have my briefcase in the car ready to go, and I'll just pack my bag with the usual stuff I need for a couple of nights. Do you have any plans for the time I'm gone? No. The children and I will just go about our business as usual during the week. Maybe we could do something together as a family over the weekend. Sounds good. I'll be looking forward to it. After dinner, she helped me clear the table and kitchen, then filled the dishwasher. After turning it on, she went into the bedroom to pack her things, and I headed to the garage to get her bag. In the garage, I looked into her car, but did not see the briefcase and assumed that it was locked in the trunk. I foresaw this and figured out how to get there in the evening. Returning to the bedroom with her bag, I asked, where are the keys to your car? You have a flat tire and probably have a slow leak. If I take it to a gas station, I can have Jerry fix it right away. She looked confused for a minute and then reached for her purse. Handing me the keys, she asked, Can't you just put the spare tire on? This is only as a last resort. We have time to fix it, so I think this is what we should do, I told her, heading back to the garage before she had a chance to think. After quickly moving her car out of the garage, I headed to the corner gas station that my high school friend Jerry owned. Having approached one of his compartments, I honked the horn. He saw me and opened the door, allowing me to drive in and close it behind me. How are you? I was supposed to be here to fix the tire, but I needed time to check something else. Trouble at home, buddy? Maybe, I told him, opening the trunk and taking out Claire's briefcase. Setting it down on my desk, I used the key on her ring to open it. Well, I have a client, so have fun, Jerry told me, heading back to the small store he ran in conjunction with his station. I began to search the briefcase very carefully, as I did not want to disturb anything unnecessarily. After checking several pockets in the flap, my fingers found a package, which I removed. My heart sank when I saw the open package of condoms. About three were missing. My worst suspicions were confirmed. I put the package back, closed, and locked the briefcase. Putting the briefcase back in the trunk, I closed it and turned around when Jerry returned. Did you find what you were looking for? 
I'm afraid so. Could you please let me stay here for a while? Maybe you could check the air in her tires so I can tell her I fixed the problem. Okay, I can. He just looked at me cheerfully, but remained silent. He was a true friend. After checking it, I left the compartment, drove to the gas station, and filled the tank. There's no telling when I'll be able to do this again. I thanked Jerry for his hospitality and headed home. My thoughts were very dark and I was on the verge of hyperventilating when I pulled back into our garage. I felt furious and disappointed that she would do this to me, the children, and our marriage. Then my mind started planning my next move. I needed definitive proof of her adulterous, immoral behavior to ensure that I would receive custody of our children. She was a good mother, and children need a mother, and I would allow visitation, but my goal was full legal custody. She would have to explain to her brother and friends why we got divorced. Entering the house, I shouted into the bedroom, All is ready. It was just a small nail. Okay, thank you. I couldn't look her in the eye yet, so I went into the kitchen and got a beer, and then went into the family room where the kids were watching TV. About half an hour later, Claire came into the room and sat next to me on the sofa. By that time I had managed to cool down, although I was very sad that this once happy family would soon become a thing of the past. Claire moved closer to me and pressed herself against me. Are you ready for tonight, stud? She whispered in my ear. I took a sip of my beer before answering. I think so, but my stomach is giving me trouble. Oh, that's too bad, honey, she told me, snuggling closer. I automatically put my hand on her shoulders and somehow felt tenderness towards her. I was wondering why she did this. Was it for the sake of excitement, or did she just need more sex than I could give her? I may never know. All I knew was that my trust in her was gone. We both put the kids to bed, and I watched her as she kissed our two little angels good night. When they got up in the morning, she was gone, but they didn't worry because she had traveled so much. That night, we made love. It was not hot, passionate sex, but rather farewell intimacy. She felt my sadness. Is your stomach still bothering you, honey? Yes, but I will survive. Do you really need to go on this trip? I asked, hoping she would put our love and our marriage first. Maybe I was hoping that this was all a nightmare and that it would all go away if she stayed home with us. Sorry, honey, this is a must, and I will try to get out and return home as soon as possible. I'm really looking forward to this weekend with you guys. Okay, honey, I sighed. Better get some sleep. You need to get up early to catch the plane. I'll take a quick shower first, then I won't have to do it in the morning. Fine. While she was in the shower, I walked over and looked in her bag to see what she had packed. Most of the clothes on top were business clothes, but underneath I found a stash of the sexiest lingerie and a little black cocktail dress that I found so sexy. Looks like she was going to be a busy girl while she was away. Carefully rearranging the bag the way I found it, I fastened the lid and went to bed. I didn't sleep very well that night, and when I heard Claire get up around five in the morning, I didn't get out of bed to say goodbye like I usually did. I knew I felt tired and sad at the same time, and I knew that the anger would start to build later. Still not feeling well, honey? She asked, kissing me good be on the cheek as I lay next to her. After I heard the garage door close and she drove away, I got up and went to the shower. I had a bussy day ahead of me. After getting the kids ready for school and eating breakfast, I pulled out the phone book and scoured the yellow pages for a private detective especially one with branches all over the country. I called a few of them and found one that had a branch in Denton, where Claire was going, and made an appointment with them that same morning. I then found a divorce lawyer that a friend of mine had used in the past and highly praised. I called and made an appointment with him in the afternoon. When I went to the private investigator's office, I arranged for Claire to be observed in the evenings when she went out, and for them to receive photographs and a report of her activities after her cases were finished for the day. I brought a photo of Claire and her route with me so they could easily find and identify her. 
They said they would email the information to the Denton office and provide me with a report by Monday morning. I told them everything would be fine and paid a large deposit for their services. They warned me that they probably wouldn't be able to get photos of them having sex, but they would try to provide as many incriminating photos as possible. I told them that would be fine with me. The afternoon meeting with the lawyer went as I had hoped. He told me that we are in a no-fault state as far as the divorce is concerned. But since I am the primary caregiver for our children, I will most likely be awarded custody. But I will have to accept that Claire will be given generous visitation time. We would split the property 50-50, but no alimony, since our incomes were approximately equal. If I got custody, Claire would have to pay child support. As for the inheritance that Claire received, she would keep it for herself, which did not bother me. Our children were my main concern. I told him to prepare the documents and serve them after Monday, based on irreconcilable differences, but asked for the stipulation that Claire must move out of our home immediately after delivery. The lawyer said that as the children's guardian, I would have the right to ask for this. When the children turn 18, the house will be sold and we will split the sale price. I left the lawyer's office feeling satisfied that life would go on for me and the children and that Claire would receive the punishment she deserved for her infidelity. I didn't immediately do anything about our finances, insurance, or will. Felt there would be time after she was served. With her inheritance, I didn't think she would have to worry about her share of our savings. It was almost time for the kids to go to school, and I headed home so I could be with them when the bus stopped. When she returned on Friday afternoon, I offered to do her laundry, but she thanked me and said she would do it later. I just chuckled to myself, thinking what a scoundrel I was for teasing her like that. I knew why she wanted to do her own laundry. The smell of sex on him could give her away, and she had to hide her extramarital affairs at all costs. That night we had sex again, although my heart wasn't in it. When we finished, she seemed to sense some reticence on my part. Is your stomach still bothering you, honey? Maybe you should see a doctor. This has been going on for too long. I thought I was being a little kind when I responded. I'm going to try a new medicine that a friend told me about, and it should solve my stomach problems. Well, I hope so. I want you to get back to work as soon as possible, she told me, cuddling up to me to sleep. God, how I will miss her. On Monday, after the kids went to school and Claire left for work, the private investigator's office called me and said they had a report ready for me. I said that I would come right away, and half an hour later I was sitting with the office manager. He told me that the report had been faxed that morning from Denton and that several photographs had also been sent. He said he didn't have time to read it all, but what he realized after skimming through it and looking at the photos seemed terrible to him. I took a copy of the report from him and began to read. Subject. Claire Barton, I recorded a sighting of this woman at 5.17 p.m. Wednesday, June 16th, in the Denton Marriott Lobby. Identification was established through a photograph obtained from the Merrickville office and a company name tag on the subject. The subject was carrying a briefcase and entered the elevator. My assistant went up in the elevator with her and confirmed that she entered her room, 414, at 523. The subject was alone. A photograph of the subject dressed before entering the room is presented as Exhibit 1A. I looked at photo 1A and saw that she was wearing her business attire. It was clearly visible that she was wearing rings. He or she must have taken the photo using a cell phone. The partner stayed in a room rented across the hallway from the property. At 6.31 a.m., my partner notified me that the subject had left the room and was on the elevator. At 6.32 a.m., the subject exited the elevator into the lobby. She was dressed as indicated in Appendix 1B. In the photo in Exhibit 1B, Clara was wearing her little black cocktail dress, high heels, and the necklace I gave her for our 10th anniversary, looking like a slutty girl. There was enough detail in the photo to reveal that she had no wedding rings on her left hand. Subject entered the dining area and ate a light dinner with a glass of wine. At 7.13 a.m., the subject left the dining area and entered the adjacent dining room where she took a seat at the bar and ordered a glass of wine. 
At 7.17 a.m., a single male approached the subject and they spoke for several minutes. C. Exhibit 1C. The photograph of Exhibit 1C shows a tall, handsome man talking to Claire at the bar. After several minutes of conversation, the subject nodded and followed the man into a booth near the dance floor. Subject spent one hour and 43 minutes with a man in a booth. I danced with a man six times and had intimate relations. See Exhibit 1D. In the photograph submitted as Exhibit 1D, Claire and the man in Exhibit 1C were sitting in a booth in a close embrace and kissing. Her short dress was hiked up to her hips and his hand was underneath it. At 8.51 a.m., the subject and man left the lounge, took the elevator to the subject's floor, and entered her room, 414. C. Exhibit 1E. Exhibit 1E shows Claire and the man from the lounge entering her room. She looked a little tipsy, but very happy. At 11.13 a.m., the male exited the subject's room and left the building. The man's car number is MBS2892, registered to Alexander B. Tate, 1424, Azalea Dr. Denton. The man is married and has two young children. I reviewed the rest of the story, and the report indicated that she repeated her actions the next evening with another man. It was signed by the investigator in Denton. My wife was a slut when she left home. I couldn't come to terms with what she was doing. Even the loss of the rings didn't scare her enough to stop. After paying the private investigator the balance of the bill, I thanked him and left. I took two extra copies of the report with me, all on CD, and drove straight home. At home, I immediately called the divorce lawyer and asked him what stage the divorce case was at. He told me they were ready to file and I asked him to continue the filing process and asked if he could serve them publicly the next day at her work. He said it wouldn't be a problem and I gave him the address of her work. I wanted to hurt her and humiliate her and having her complain at work would go a long way toward getting back at me for what she did. We didn't have sex that night. I think she knew something was wrong and perhaps realized I knew something, but was afraid to voice her concerns other than to say she hoped I would get better soon. Strangely, she seemed a little reserved herself, but I let that pass without comment. In the morning, I got up early because I didn't sleep very well at night. I worked on the computer until I heard the kids move, and then I went and started eating breakfast. After breakfast, I walked her to work, and she came up to me to hug and kiss me before leaving for work. I gave her a little hug before walking her out the door. I think at that moment she understood everything. There were tears in her eyes as I closed the door behind her, and she whispered, I love you. When she left, I felt overcome with great sadness and wanted to cry myself, but the children needed to be organized so I could get them ready for the school bus. The call came at approximately 10.45. Caller ID showed it was Claire's workplace, and I answered the phone without answering the call. There was a moment's pause while the caller accepted the fact that I was not going to talk. I am so sorry. Her voice said it in a whisper, and then the line went dead and I hung up. She didn't come home that evening, and I wondered if she was playing her little sick game of not caring about her husband anymore. I knew I had been cruel to her, but I retained some justified rage. The kids wondered where Mom was, but I took them to Mickey D's for dinner, and by the time we got home, they were very tired and ready to go to bed. The next morning, she called. Honey, can I come home? Pick up my things and we can talk. I felt pangs of conscience, but they quickly passed. Why don't you come between nine hours and noon? Then the children and I won't be here. As for the conversation, I will speak with you one-on-one -on -one at my attorney's office once you have signed, certified, and returned the divorce papers. Then I will listen to everything you have to say. A sob then. Okay. And the phone turned off again. She signed the papers, and six months later we were finally divorced. She was pregnant but had an abortion before the divorce. When she fucked her last lover, the rubber band broke, and it was close to her fertile period, so even though I discovered her cheating because she lost her rings, it most likely would have been discovered anyway. I heard she's back on the dating scene. I think if she gets close to marriage again, I will warn her future husband about her fidelity. There's no point in her cuckolding the two of us. We had a meeting, as I told her, at my lawyer's office. She asked me to give up the divorce, not having unlimited access to our children was hard on her, 
but I told her I simply couldn't trust her anymore. She explained that she had seen a psychologist and he had diagnosed her with a form of nymphomania and she had been helped to overcome her addiction. Now she controls her urges. I told her that it wasn't enough for me if she still had urges and if she had sought help for her urges in the first place, she wouldn't be in the position she is in now. I left her crying in the lawyer's office. I'm dating again and I think I've found a woman I like and I think I could easily fall in love with her. She's my age and divorced. I caught my husband cheating and didn't put up with it. My type of woman. A big plus for her is that children also like her. I guess it's only a matter of time until I pop the question. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.